When I was at medical school, I was lucky enough to have the most entertaining professor in pathology. His name is Robin Fraser and his passion is the liver. Today's video is a small tribute to him where I will be talking about one of nature's truly remarkable compounds, glutathione. It keeps us protected from toxins and also plays a vital role in our immune defense system. Although glutathione is everywhere in our bodies, it's the liver that has the highest concentrations of this magical substance. Glutathione is a naturally occurring molecule that is found in humans, animals, plants, and even some single-celled organisms. Like vitamin C and E, it is an antioxidant, which means a compound that blocks oxidation. I'm not going to give you a chemistry lesson today. But essentially, during an oxidation reaction, compounds lose electrons. The problem for humans and other organisms is that oxidation reactions can lead to the formation of free radicals, which can be toxic to cells. Now free radicals are troublemaker substances in our bodies that are highly reactive because of their unpaired electron arrangements. Although this can come in handy sometimes as mammals are thought to neutralize potentially dangerous bacteria with free radicals produced by our own defense cells like macrophages and neutrophils. Then the free radicals are rapidly consumed once the bacterial cells are destroyed. However, major problems can develop when our body goes into oxidative stress, the state where the amount of free radicals overwhelm the body's ability to detoxify them, as well as repair the resulting damage. Oxidative stress is thought to contribute to a wide variety of conditions, including heart disease, infections, aging, male infertility, neurological conditions, autism, and even cancer. In fact, cancer researchers Roberto Losigno and Vincent Castronovo commented that reduced glutathione, GSH, is an essential actor in several human diseases, including cancer and cardiovascular diseases. Its implication in oncogenesis has led to the development of new strategies to improve both prevention and treatment of cancer. So where exactly does glutathione come into the equation? Glutathione exists in two forms, reduced, GSH and oxidized GSSG. With increased oxidative stress, GSSG will accumulate in the cells as the GSH is consumed. Now this diagram shows the pathway of free radical toxicity. There are three parts of the pathway where reduced glutathione detoxifies free radicals and makes them into non-toxic products. The non-toxic products are then safely disposed of by the body. Nature will never cease to amaze us. In a healthy person, there is usually a balance between reduced glutathione and its oxidized form. If the number of free radicals increases because of toxic influences such as smoking, heavy metal exposure, drug consumption, stress, etc., then the amount of reduced glutathione in the cells may decrease. If the state continues, a deficiency of reduced glutathione results and the aggressive free radicals can carry out their mischief unchecked. This can often be seen in cancer patients as chemo and radiotherapies usually worsen the situation, something that needs to be considered by treating physicians. The very life-preserving qualities of glutathione has been illustrated in animal studies. Knockout mice are bred that have a gene disrupted so they are unable to make glutathione in their livers. By 21 days old, the mice show marked liver inflammation, and by one month, the mice are typically dead from liver failure. An interesting point to health practitioners who might be watching, you may have already used the glutathione detoxification pathway to save a life without even realizing it. In the case of poisoning with the common pain reliever paracetamol or acetaminophen, its metabolite, NAP, QI is toxic to the liver. Glutathione detoxifies as NAPQI, but in cases of paracetamol overdose, the liver supplies of glutathione are overwhelmed and then NAPQI destroys its cells. Hence, the glutathione thief can lead to liver failure and even death. Emergency doctors administer high doses of amino acid cysteine, usually intravenously, in order to stimulate glutathione production to detoxify the cells. On that note, for regular users of paracetamol or acetaminophen, you may want to consider Consider increasing your dietary consumption of sulfur amino acids such as cysteine, but more on that soon. So quickly, what about our immune system? 
Researchers have suggested that our cellular immune system can be divided into two main responses, the type 1 helper Th1 and the type 2 helper Th2 system. To be clear, it is not a simple dichotomy and there is plenty of debate about how the systems kind of interact. However, imbalance between the two systems has been implicated in a range of illnesses. This has been an area of particular interest for medical specialist for environmental medicine, Joachim Mutter, in his 2009 book, Healthy Instead of Chronically Ill. One of the weapons of the Th1 system is nitric oxide, which can be used to eliminate cancerous cells, among other things. However, when nitric oxide is produced, it must be detoxified by the body's own cells through reduced glutathione or sulfur groups, otherwise it also destroys our healthy cells. If the levels of reduced glutathione and other antioxidants are insufficient, the immune system may switch to the Th2 response, which simultaneously reduces the Th1 immune response. As a result of the suppressed Th1 activity, not only can chronic infections with bacteria or fungi occur, but potentially also cancer, as cancer cells are destroyed by nitric oxide through the Th1 immune response. In order to compensate for the throttling of the Th1 system, the Th2 immune defense can be easily overstimulated. Indeed, the Th2 system is often overactive and the Th1 system is shut down, not only in people who suffer from allergies or autoimmune diseases, where the cell's own structures are attacked, but especially in cancer patients. To quote Dr. Mutter, this means that in people suffering from cancer or other chronic diseases, it is advisable to increase the body's own glutathione production by detoxifying the mitochondria and by taking in certain substances. This then leads to the Th2 system being brought down to a balanced level. The significant increase in all kinds of chronic diseases over the past decades suggests that the population in industrialized countries is suffering from a growing glutathione deficit or mitochondrial hypofunction caused on the one hand by the increasing exposure to more and more toxins and harmful radiation and on the other hand by the supply of poor quality food that contains less and less vital nutrients because it is produced using industrialized farming methods and on depleted soils. So what can you do to ensure enough glutathione is in your body? Unfortunately, we can't absorb it directly as our digestive system breaks it down. So glutathione is actually synthesized in the body from the amino acids glutamic acid, cysteine and glycine. These are called non-essential or conditionally essential amino acids, which means the body can produce them internally. However, glutathione levels in the human body can be increased by consuming raw vegetables and wild herbs. The fruit durian, as well as wild garlic and garlic, all contain good sources of sulfur-containing compounds. A very high content of sulfur amino acids is found in egg products, with the egg white containing around 8%. Just make sure the eggs are from genuine free-range hens living in healthy environments. In terms of supplements, milk thistle extract is one that has shown glutathione profile benefits in both animal and human studies. A fascinating historical glutathione reference was noted in Sir Stanley Davidson's text, Human Nutrition and Dietetics. It is even possible that the ancient nostrum of brimstone and treacle had nutritional value unsuspected by modern knowledge. What does brimstone contain high amounts of? Sulfur. Although our ancestors didn't know all the biochemical details of glutathione pathways, it seems they still understood how to correct some of our health problems with dietary remedies. And finally, healthy sleep is also said to help regenerate the glutathione reserves of the liver, so why not get a little more shut-eye? It goes without saying that there are no magic bullets when it comes to maintaining health. Taking care of your glutathione system is one part of building a healthy immune system. Where possible, it also needs to be combined with regular exercise, breathing fresh air, maintaining social relationships, getting out into the sun sufficiently to ensure sufficient vitamin D levels among other benefits, getting adequate sleep and eating a healthy diet rich in nutrients and fresh foods low in toxins. And of course, avoiding unhelpful stress. Many of you have mentioned that switching off from sensationalized mainstream news platforms has helped in this regard. For more information on how to boost your immune system, please check out my video on seven ways to boost your immune system naturally. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next week.